wanted to talk about the different ways to reset your QNAP NAS. Uh, so reasons to do this would be you've perhaps uh, forgotten your password or made a configuration change, uh, which means you've no longer got access to the NAS, such as in the network and virtual switch. Um, or perhaps you've got a new NAS and you want to uh, pass on your old NAS to somebody else and you want to do a complete uh, reinitialization re of your NAS back to how it was when you first got it. Um, so I'll talk to you about the different ways we've got. Essentially, there are five different ways. Uh, two physically with a button on the NAS. Um, and we've also got three different ways uh, within the software. Uh, there is an overlap of one of them between the, the physical and the software version. I just want to premise this first of all with a couple of settings that must be enabled for um, everything that I'm about to talk to to work. Um, so here on this NAS, if I go into the control panel and go to the uh, hardware option, at the top here, you'll see that there is a tick box saying enable configuration reset switch. So this is the uh, uh, sort of sunken reset switch on the back of all of our NAS, whether it's rack or tower, it's there on all of them. Um, if that is not ticked, um, the physical options will not work. Um, and also when we talk about the options um, that you'll hear a beep after you hold the button for a certain amount of time, uh, you'll only hear the beep if the audio alerts um, are ticked over here. So you've got to have these turned on. So specifically system events has to be turned on for that to work. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll talk to you about the uh, the different options and then I'll, I'll demo one of them. I'll, I'll Hopefully you'll hear the beep. Um, so the five different methods have got the, the hardware and software version. So here's a picture of the physical reset switch. So you will need something like a, a drawing pin or a paperclip, a SIM eject tool, something like that to, to push into the uh, the reset button. Um, it is located in different places depending on the NAS. It may be on the bottom, it may be on the, the top of the back, the, the bottom of the back. Um, it is always labeled, so you will be able to see it, um, but you will need an implement uh, to push in there and push that button with. Um, so the first mode um, is to do a three second press of this reset button. So when you do a three second press, a few things will happen. Um, so first, the password for the admin account will be changed to the default password. Now, what does this mean? depending on the firmware version you're running. So we did make a change um, a couple of years ago. So anybody running uh, QTS 4.4.1 and older, um, when you push the reset button, nice and easy, it's going to change it to a default username and password of admin and admin, lowercase for both. Um, so the username is admin and the password is admin. Um, if you're on QTS 4.4.2 and later, um, all the way up to the present day, um, it's going to set the default username to still be admin, um, but the password will be unique for every single NAS. It's going to effectively be the first MAC address. Um, so the MAC address can be found in a couple of different places. So you can open up QFinder Pro um, and it will go off and find uh, your NAS on the network and it'll be the one listed in the right hand column over there. Uh, when you type it in, it's got to match the case. So it's got to have uppercase um, uh, where the letters are concerned and you just remove the hyphens from what's displayed here. Um, it will also be printed on the NAS somewhere. There'll be some stickers um, so you can also find it. It will be the one labeled as Mac one. Um, so that's the password side of things with the three second press. But the three second press does also do a couple of extra things. Um, so it will uh, change your TCP IP configuration. So if you had it set to uh, static IP, it will switch it back to obtain an IP address automatically using DHCP. Um, it will disable jumbo frames if you had them enabled. Um, and if you did have port trunking enabled in any mode other than active backup, um, it will switch it across to active backup so that both LAN ports or multiple LAN ports can, can now work again, even if they were a part of a port trunking mode. Um, if you disable the default system port, the HTTP port of uh, port 8080 or changed it to a different port number, it will be put back to the factory default. Um, and if you did have a security level set uh, higher than low, it will put it back to low, which is effectively allowing all connections, not just allow some connections from specific IPs. It's going to allow all connections again back to the NAS. Once you've reset the NAS, it's um, of course, you're able to go back in and re-enable all of these uh, these items. Um, 
VLANs will be disabled if you were using those as well, and also service binding. So service binding is a feature we have that lets you limit certain functions of the NAS to a specific physical port. Um, this is going to allow every function to work on every interface, um, so all restrictions there will be removed. A couple of extra things that will happen that it doesn't talk about there is some extra things will, will change the default. So if you did have a separate user account created for the administrator, um, that user, user account is basically going to be gone. Um, and uh, also the NAS name um, will we'll reset back to the factory default name, which is basically the, the word NAS and the last six digits of the MAC address. Um, so that's the three second press. Now I've got a NAS uh, fairly close to the microphone here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that for three seconds. And hopefully you'll hear what the beep sounds like. So this will be the three second press. So I've just pushed that now. So one, two, three. So there's the beep. So I've let go of the button immediately. Um, now what the, what's that going to do to the NAS? So right now the NAS is resetting all the settings we've just talked about. Uh, once it's confirmed they're all reset, the NAS will do a reboot. So you're going to periodically hear it uh, beep as the video continues here because it is quite close to the microphone um, as it does a, a, system, a full system reset here with the three second press and it's going to reboot the NAS and eventually come back. Um, so this specific NAS, if I have a quick look at the QFinder Pro, uh, you can see I had this NAS called TS-464 or a static IP address of 10.10.2020. Um, when I refresh this in a little while, once the NAS has had a chance to do a quick reboot here, um, it's going to show the original name. It's already changed the IP address actually, just as we were watching it there. So it went from 10.10.2020 uh, to 10.10.0217, which is one assigned by my DHCP server. Um, so the NAS name will catch up in a little bit after the reboot of the NAS as well. But that's what's happening now. The NAS is doing all its reset functions and then it will do a reboot. Now the other option is to do a 10 second press. Now I do want to stress that both options here, the only two available with the physical reset button, neither will delete the user data. There is no way to delete the user data using the reset button. Um, but the 10 second press will do a little bit more. It will do everything that the three second beep does that we've already talked about. Um, but it will also restore all uh, default system settings. So that's every setting on the NAS that we haven't already talked about. Everything else will be put back um, to a factory default state. Now this does also mean it will uh, do the same for the shared folders as well. Uh, really the only shared folder it will generally recreate after a 10 second press would be the public share. Uh, one of the default ones that we have on the NAS. If you had another folder um, called data, for example, um, the data folder would be gone. That share is gone. It, you know, you might think, oh, it's lost all my data. It's deleted everything. Uh, the data is still there. You just simply have to go into control panel and shared folders and just recreate a shared folder with the exact same name. If you just call it data, you will see the data share again and all the data that you had in it before will still be there. It's just sort of remounting it by using uh, the 10 second press uh, option there. Um, so that's the two physical ways to do it. Um, now the software options, we've got three buttons when you go into um, the control panel system and the backup slash restore option and then you can click over to the restore to factory default tab at the top. Um, you've got restore factory defaults and format all volumes. So that one will um, get rid of all the data. It doesn't really uh, give you the uh, wizard again. It doesn't put it back to completely how you bought it. Um, so the wizard will still have run. So it will have had some basic settings um, chosen um, and the unit will have all volumes completely formatted. Effectively this one, you're not going to have to rebuild the RAID if you had RAID running on it. Um, the existing RAID structure would still be there. Uh, reset settings is um, almost exactly the same as the um, 10 second button push. In fact, I think it is exactly the same. Uh, so reset settings is going to do uh, the same as a 10 second push. So it will not delete the data, um, but you will have to recreate your shares if you want to see them again, to see the data that's within them again. Um, the last option on the far right hand side is reinitialize NAS. Um, so reinitialize NAS um, is exactly as it sounds like. It's going to completely put the NAS back to a complete factory default state. It will erase all data, including the RAID configurations and reset all settings. After you push that one, um, it will ask you, do you want the NAS to be shut down or restart it? Um, so if you wanted to go and set it up again, you can choose restart. It won't turn the NAS off. Um, but the first thing you'll see when you go back to the configuration pages is the initial setup wizard uh, that you will have seen when you first set up your NAS. 
Um, so that's what the reinitialize NAS option is going to do. It's going to do a complete um, factory default. So for example, if I'm um, uh, sending out a, um, um, a test NAS for, for, for a person that needs to test the NAS, for example, um, I may have been using it, um, but before I ship it to them, I would do reinitialize NAS. I would choose the shutdown option at the end um, so that when they get the NAS, they get the experience of the NAS as if it was uh, factory fresh, if you like, that nobody else had used it before. Um, so it's gonna completely put it back to a factory default and they will get to experience the initial setup wizard as well. Um, so that's the the article here. This article I will link in the uh, bottom of the video description here just so that you can see that. Um, if I just pull up uh, QFinder Pro again, we'll see if the NAS has changed all of its settings as it rebooted. I don't think I heard the beep for it to come back. Um, so I think it's still resetting. Um, but what we'll do here is we'll just pause it here till it's done what it's going to do with its reset um, and then we'll come back when the NAS is completely rebooted. Okay, so I gave the NAS another minute there. Um, the NAS has completely rebooted and changed all the settings. Um, so now I'm back at the uh, the login screen here. Um, so I can click login and now it needs the username. Uh, now the Craig user account that I had before um, isn't going to uh, work here. That's the one I forgot the password for in this example. So what I need to do is I need to log in with the username of admin and I need to log in with the uh, MAC address that's written here. So I'll just move that down to my second screen so I can see both things at once. So I'm gonna log in with admin. Uh, then I'm gonna type in the MAC address for this NAS, which is 245EBE5FE196. Uh, e I'm gonna click login. So I'm not going to save that. Uh, so now I've logged back into the NAS um, using the admin account this time. Now this account was disabled before. Um, so now what I can do is I can go into the control panel. I can go look at the users. So I can see I've got the Craig account still down there as enabled. Um, so I could go in there and now change the password for that account if I'd forgotten it, for example. Uh, so let's imagine I've, I've changed that password. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to log out as the admin user. I'm going to log back in um, with the Craig account because I still do remember the password for that one, so I don't need to change it. Uh, so once I've logged back into the NAS, I'm able to come back to the control panel, but this time you can see at the top right I'm logged in as Craig now. So I'm going to come back to the control panel, go to users. Now because this admin account is now on the default username and password that really anybody can find um, using um, the a QFinder Pro software, for example, it's just the default MAC address. Uh, before you log out as admin, it might be a good idea to change the admin password to something else. Um, but now I'm logged in as Craig, I'm going to come into the admin account, I'm going to click Edit Account Profile, and I'm going to disable that account. I don't want the admin account enabled on this NAS. I've got the Craig account for that that's uh, an admin um, account as well. Um, so that one's done. Um, that's the full reset of the three second press. Um, so if you have forgot the password, that's effectively going to just put the admin account uh, um, re-enabled um, and back to a default password for you. Um, if anybody has any questions, do let us know. Again, the, um, the link to the article that explains all this is in the, the bottom of the video description. Um, so if you do need to, to have a read of that and see the different options in more detail, you can go there and do that as well. All right, thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye.